Well, joining me live now is Shadow Finance Minister Jane Hume. Good to see you this morning, Jane. Thanks for coming on the program. If Donald Trump requests that we lift defence spending up to 3% of GDP to keep AUKUS on track, how should we respond? Kenny, Peter Dutton already responded in last May's budget in reply that Australia should be focusing on its defence spending and indeed increasing that in order to address and face the geo strategic challenges that we have both in our region and around the world. Our concern is that Anthony Albanese has either delayed or kicked down the road some of that defence spending that he has already committed to. Last time Labor were in government, our defence spending reached its lowest levels since World War II. It took a coalition government to bring our defence investment back up to that 2% of GDP. You can see from a future coalition government that we would maintain our commitment to making sure that we have capability for our men and women in uniform. OK, so you think 2% is the right figure, not 3%? Well, 2% was the right figure a decade ago. Unfortunately, we're coming from a long way behind. Now we need to focus on making sure that our capability in our region uh, is, uh, is enhanced and that those projects that would enhance that capability are not delayed or kicked down into the medium term. And that's the concern that we're seeing from the Albanese government now. OK. Treasurer Jim Chalmers is expected to say today in a keynote speech that Australia should expect upward pressure on inflation and a decline in exports under US President-elect Donald Trump's plan to impose steep tariffs on China. Would you agree with that assessment? The US is Australia's strongest ally and when the US does well, the rest of the world does well also. Uh, at the last time uh, that um, Donald Trump was president, he put tariffs on uh, certain metals, uh, but Australia, the coalition government in Australia, managed to secure an exemption from that tariff. I have no doubt that the strategic relationship, the very important economic and strategic relationship that we have with the US will come to the fore uh, with the new president-elect Donald Trump when he, when he takes over the presidency. Uh, we know that it is going to be a changing economic environment. Unfortunately, my concern is that Australia is less resilient economically than it could have been had we have got inflation under control earlier. Uh, because inflation has stayed higher for longer, we are more vulnerable to changes in the global economic environment. Yeah, but could a Trump trade war force the RBA to jack up rates, meaning that the government's ability to exempt Australia from tariffs will be a crucial cost of living factor ahead of the election? We would hope that it wouldn't come to that, that the very good and strong and deep relationship that Australia has with the US that has, you know, has gone back decades, it started with uh, ANZUS, it's now been deepened with AUKUS, and there are not just... Uh, strategic interests in AUKUS. There are also economic interests both for Australia and for the US in that relationship. We would hope that the relationship goes so deep uh, and, and so wide that we wouldn't, that that's not a concern that we would have. However, it is going to be important that we maintain uh, both um, economic resilience and diplomatic tact in order to make sure that that relationship maintains its strength.